Welcome back to our series on environmental consequences in engineering design. In this session, we will look specifically at environmental issues associated with extracting natural resources from the natural environment, as opposed to recycling or reuse of existing materials. Natural resource extraction is often considered the cradle of a technology. It is the first step in the evolution of materials into products. Where raw materials are collected so that they can then be processed and assembled into products for distribution and sale. At this stage of a product life cycle, we will look at what happens when natural resources are in such high demand and low supply that competition for access to these resources creates conditions at the point of extraction that result in serious and violent conflict in areas where these materials are mined. These conflicts in turn lead to a wide range of abuses of human rights and environment. While technically, human rights violations are more social and often economic in nature, they are frequently and extensively intertwined with environment abuses during natural resource extraction. Simply put, conflict and uncontrolled hostile competition hurts both people and environment. Let's look specifically at gold, which is used extensively in electronics, components, devices, and appliances. Gold is used in an impressive range of these electronics, ranging from integrated circuits or chips to motherboards, contacts, plugs, and sockets. So much so, in fact, that gold use in electronics ranks behind only jewelry and coins in the amount used each year around the world. Gold is a source of conflict and harm in our world, but how and what can engineers do about it? Well, for starters, let's look at why gold is so attractive to the electronics industry. Gold is one of the most reliable, safe, and well-behaved conductors of electricity available for any electronics design. It is easily formed, has great thermal conductivity for getting rid of heat in electronics quickly, and because it is malleable and ductile, maintains electrical contact for years and years. It is so reliable that the more expensive an electronic product gets and the more high-end it is, the more gold it uses to ensure reliability over years and even decades of use. Alongside the production of jewelry and coins, demand for gold in electronics produces a hefty problem. High demand for a material that is already precious and in short supply. High demand and low supply are a recipe for trouble, and in many areas of the world this trouble extends well beyond healthy economic competition for a precious resource. In some developing countries, such as the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC, Politically unstable areas abound, and gold mining is a known catalyst for conflict. Mines governed by illegal and armed militia almost invariably produce a myriad of human rights abuses, including violence, use of child labor, and other exploitation of individuals, which ultimately degrades quality of life and environment and reduces the potential for these communities and societies to move ahead in this and future generations. Fortunately, as a result of the Dodd-Frank Act passed in the United States in 2010, public companies and corporations in the United States are required to report gold that is purchased from conflict areas. In theory, anyone, engineer or otherwise, purchasing gold in the United States from a public entity can know and avoid gold that comes from conflict-plagued areas around the world. How can this information be put to use? Fortunately, a number of non-government organizations or NGOs, such as the World Guild Council, provide information about which gold is conflict-free and which comes from areas of the world where mining gold harms people and environment. This and other organizations provide lists of companies that sell conflict-free gold. Along with laws such as the Dodd-Frank Act, it has become easier than ever before for engineers to ensure that the gold used in designs and products is associated with minimal impacts. 
As demand for gold continues to increase, this information becomes ever more valuable in limiting the consequences of this precious and high demand metal. Gold is not the only mineral whose mining and extraction produces problems for both people and environment. Other conflict minerals include tantalum, tin, and tungsten, all used in high technology and other products, though not in as high demand as gold. Although not as many resources are available to check out the source of these conflict minerals, resources and information are nevertheless out there and the engineer of today is well equipped to source these minerals in such a way that harm to those involved in the extraction is minimized. Conflict-free sourcing practices in turn reduce demand in conflict-ridden areas, which ultimately leads to positive change in these areas as the source of conflict is reduced and both treatment of other human beings and the natural environment rises to a more acceptable and compassionate level. In summary, what initially appears to be an issue over which the design engineer or other engineer has little or no control is in fact something that engineers can do quite a bit about, thanks to a range of organizations that support the evolving reduction of the negative impacts of technology. This concludes our snapshot of the environmental consequences of natural resource extraction that involved those involved in the mining of gold and other minerals around the world. Thank you for joining us today. We certainly hope that this look into the world of mining gold has provided insight into how the engineer can reduce the impacts of engineering design at the cradle, and that you'll join us again as we look at other examples of environmental consequences in this series on real-world considerations in engineering design.